Hi everyone, welcome back to our YouTube channel Electro Study. This is lecture series 12 under computer networks dealing with Ethernet protocol. Please do like, share, subscribe, and comment. Come, let's go into the video. What is an Ethernet protocol? So, it is a popular and the oldest technology of LAN. It is commonly used in all LAN environments. So, why we say that it is popular? Because of the maximum rates over a long distance using optical media. So, now this protocol has to follow some topology, right? So, it uses star topology. There are many protocols available. Why we use, choose or use this Ethernet protocol? Because it is simple, easy to maintain, easy to implement. Because of easy maintenance and implementation, it produces good flexibility. So here, it focuses on the first two layers of OSI model, physical layer and the data link layer. So here, in the architecture, the physical layer, that is this protocol, as I said, it focuses on two, uh, two layers of the OSI model. This physical layer focuses on hardware elements like cables, network interface cards, like that. And this data link layer, which is subdivided into two layers, logical link control and media access control, it focuses on how the data are sent from one node to the other. It uses CSMA CA. Why it is using CSMA CA and CD? It is used for accessing the frames. This protocol should use different types of media to operate at different speeds. So these are the different medias that has been used. So it is, it, its speed is measured in Mbps, millions, millions of bits per second. So if it is 10 Mbps, it is standard Ethernet. If it is 100 Mbps, it is fast Ethernet. So 1000 Mbps, it is gigabit Ethernet. So here, this 100 base TX and 10 base T, what it tells you is, it gives you the length of the cables used and it also tells what topology the protocol is following. So this is about the architecture. Now we'll be seeing how it works. So Ethernet at the first layer, it uses signals, bit streams, physical components and tells information about different topologies. So it plays a key role in the layer one. And in MAC layer, what happens is it gets the info and arranges the data for communication over the layer. And the LLC, logic link control, it is an independent of physical equipment, which is used for process of communication. This passes the data from the upper layer to the lower layer and ensures that it is reaching the destination node successfully. So for that, there is a structure of frame. See here, you have a different frame structure. So here, preamable, it is nothing but it is a seven bytes, which has zeros and ones consecutively. And it indicates the beginning of the frame. It permits the sender and receiver to be in synchronization and it indicates the receiver that it is going to send the frame. So what SFD does, it is one of the main part of the preamable and SFD is called as start of frame delimiter. So it is one byte field with some values. That values is nothing but as a formation of flag. So it will be indicating that there is an upcoming bit coming from the preamble. So once it reaches SFD, it splits the frame and signals the beginning of the frame. And also it gives, produces a warning signal for synchronization that has to be produced between the sender and the receiver. And this is destination address. So this is six bytes field. So this is the address. So here the address of the frame and the address of the device MAC is compared. When it is matching, then the frame is allowed to be uh, travel to the receiver end. If suppose if the address is not matching, then the data is, that is the frames is completely corrupted. SA is nothing but that is source address is nothing but it is the address of the source frame and it's, it is six bytes field. And this is the type here, the actual data that is here the type is it will be telling about the length of the bit. It will be two bytes 
long and it mention it gives you the entire length of the frame so the entire length of the frame should not exceed 1500 bits be clear it should not exceed 1500 bits so the complete data with the header and the trailer will be formed in this field with header and the trailer where it's originating where it has to travel all the data will be available here so if it goes below 38 or some permissible limit is 46 bytes if it is go go beyond that is go below 46 bytes or 38 bytes then the frame with the other uh, something has to be filled to form a complete frame right so zeros will be padded along the frame and sent to the next layer for the communication and finally, there is a CRC check that is performed. CRC is nothing but cyclic redundancy check. It detects the error. So if the checksum of the destination after receiving the frame, the checksum of the destination, if it is not matching with the checksum of the sender, first of it, which is performed, then the data is corrupted. That is the reminder that you get when you detect an error, it should be zero, 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 zero byte should be there. If, if there is a bit, one bit present, then it is telling that there is an error present in the frame. This is this extended Ethernet frame that is DA is nothing but destination address, source address, type of the field that is what kind of topology it follows, what connection, all those. DSAP is destination service access point. SSAP is source service access point and this is the control of data complete data is formed here and FCS is nothing but frame checksum that is cyclic redundancy check. Now you need to detect and uh, avoid the collision of frames when it is uh, traveling from one end to the other. So Ethernet protocol analyzer is used. So best example for this analyzer is HTTP debugger. Why this is used is it is a software tool. It is used for capturing and analyzing the traffic of data in the network. How much data is being formed at one point? Is it correctly following the path or is there any collision? All will be captured and analyzed with this Ethernet protocol analyzer. So there are some advantages and disadvantages in this Ethernet protocol. So as I said, because of simple maintenance, cost will be less, security is high, speed is at high, obviously efficiency will be high if all these are at high, reliability is good. So if there is a, uh, this Ethernet protocol, it provides a fast speed, speed of data and it, that data will be strong towards the noise. So when it is strong towards the noise, the data's data transfer doesn't degrade. So when there is no degradation of data transfer, the quality of the data transfer is obviously very good. And there are small disadvantages, that is, it is non-deterministic in services. So the data is very small when it is used in application purpose. It is using connectionless, that is wireless networks the receiver if it is not producing any acknowledgement back it is tough for the communication to take place if suppose full duplex communication is taking place then it is not supported with some optical medias and if there is any error occurring within the ethernet then no troubleshooting can be done it is difficult for troubleshooting so these are the small disadvantages that you can see in the ethernet protocol Stay tuned, of, stay tuned for more information. Thank you.